great. Now, one of the things that we're going to be talking about today is how leads. And we have Brady from Carrot.com. How are you? Good, Kendall. Thanks for having me on, man. Right. It's good to see you. Really excited to talk about this today. Hey, most definitely. It's all about how to generate leads using AI tools. And that's what we're going to be talking about today, the AI tools. And one of the things I love about yourself, Brady, is how you're a content strategist. So it's not about just the AI tools that are available, but to think through the process and have a strategy about that. And that's why I really uh, just love learning from you and working from you. And that's why I have you on the Kendall Matthew show right now is just to talk about some of these things about, and when I'm talking to co-founders and executives, they always want to know how to generate leads. And now with AI tools that are available and software tools that are available, it's even more important for people to know what to actually work through and work with. And today we're going to be talking about that, Brady, and I really appreciate you having me on uh, and you on with this call. It's very important. So tell us a little bit about uh, yourself and carrot.com and, uh, and kind of the things that you do in their real estate space as well. Yeah, absolutely, man. Thanks for the quick intro. Um, so my name is Brady. Like you said, I'm the content strategist for carrot.com. Uh, basically, that means I get to teach marketing to marketers. And so at Carrot, we're really focused on evergreen marketing, on long-term inbound lead generation to help people bring in the highest quality leads. But I will talk about today some of the, like Kendall mentioned, uh, some of the AI tools that we have to help take the headache out of content, uh, content marketing, content creation. Uh, so you can do some short-term lead gen, but also work on your long-term lead gen. So as far as me and real estate, uh, my wife and I personally, we flipped our first house. So that was fun. We flipped it while we lived in it. Some parts were fun. And then um, a few years later, we ended up building our first house. And so we just wrapped that up last year. I GC'd it from start to finish. That was quite the journey, quite the dream, but I was exhausting. So um, I do have an interest in real estate. But yeah, as far as care.com, man, we've been going strong for over 10 years now. Uh, we primarily help real estate investors, wholesalers, flippers. We help a lot of agents as well. And it's an exciting time for us because we're branching into the HVAC industry. And really, uh, you can see the concepts I'm going to teach today. Carrot works and performs in any service-based industry. Uh you know, that depends on local search. So it wants to show up in local Google search results. And so it works really well. We have, we even have like daycares running off of carrot. It's crazy. Um, but yeah, so we're branching into other, other industries. If you are like a general contractor or HVAC, some sort of contractor, um, carrot works for them too. But yeah, we help basically in a nutshell, we help generate, we help local service-based businesses generate the highest um, motivation, the most motivated, uh, leads online. So we do it through our websites. We like to call them a lead generation hub because it glues all your marketing together. It's much more than a website. And, uh, we got really powerful content marketing tools, like I said, to kind of take the, the headache out of it. So that's us in a nutshell, man. Right. No, it's perfect. And as you're, as folks that you're listening in, if you want to ask any questions, I have a QR code up here. So you just ask Kendall, just go ahead and scan the QR code. And those questions will come to myself and we will answer those questions as well. So I'll just keep that up there for you to look at and scan. You can go to kendallmatthews.com forward slash ask and go ahead and ask any questions that you have. Of course, you can do that in the description section. We're going to have all the links as available as there as well. But Brady, what was very exciting to me is what you talked about, and that's being able to focus on how to generate leads and lead generation in the ad tools for service-based businesses and bringing in those specific type of things that will help these co-founders, owners, you know, these entrepreneurs grow their business. And what do you see are some of the main challenges that people have when they're trying to determine what their strategy should actually be. Yeah, as far as so challenges when it comes to what their strategy should be, I think one of the biggest strategies I see, or excuse me, challenges, is that a lot of people don't focus enough on what their unique selling proposition is. To me as a marketer, this is second nature, but as business owners, sometimes they forget you need to figure out how to niche down and how to separate yourself so that you're not competing uh, with everyone else, you know? Um, 
beverage companies are really good at doing this. Back in the day, it was easy. It was just, hey, we have beer for sale. Like, come buy beer and anybody would buy it. And then it's like, okay, we have the coldest beer. We have the freshest beer. We, you see this evolution. And now today, you go down the beer aisle at the grocery store, and it's insane how many different little niches and nuances there are. You know, like starting with back in the day when Coors started doing like the, the cold is the Rockies, like the cold indicator on the can. But the it's just interesting how some other industries and products are really good at evolving and finding their unique selling proposition. Like what makes them se uh, special, whether that's the packaging, the positioning, the marketing, or the actual product and the and, and the beer case, the taste and the flavor of it. But yeah, I think if, if business owners really focused on how they can um, serve people differently than others. And so for real estate investors and agents, that's how you can help sellers, what you provide to sellers, uh, you know, that other people aren't and what separates you. Maybe it's your business model. Maybe you're an investor and an agent, you're a hybrid. Um, I think if people could lean into their niches and leverage that more, that'd be really powerful. Gotcha. So uh, let's, let's dive into it and, and let's see what that actually looks like. So we're talking about care and how you're helping people. What does a product actually look like? Yeah. Let's show it off, man. Um, let me share my screen right here. Okay. Window. Okay. If you want to add that. Okay. Um, I had this pulled up just before I show the website when we're talking about uh, long-term, when we're talking about generating leads through Carrot and you asking what we do, this is really what we do. We provide motivated, uh, profitable leads. So we ran a survey a study a while back um, and compared non-Carrot leads to Carrot leads. What we found is that on average, Carrot leads converted over seven times higher uh, than non-carrot leads and an extra almost $14,000 profit per deal. So it's crazy. Um, the average deal size and the conversion of the, just because of the motivation of the leads that come through carrot versus other marketing methods. So anyways, that's a little better way to explain what we do in a nutshell, but this is, uh, this is carrot itself from the product. This is the nuts and bolts. So you're in, you told me you were in Phoenix, Arizona, right before we hopped on this call, right. I went and Googled Phoenix air, uh, how to sell my house fast. Uh, Phoenix, Arizona, and number three search result was uh, this website. In most cases, in you're going to find a carrot site in the number one, number two spot. We're dominating search results for phrases like this uh, for motivated seller leads across pretty much every market in America. You can go into any city, type in sell my house fast, city, state, you're going to find a carrot website. Um, but this is a carrot website. Um, we have built our you know, our bread and butter is conversion and getting found online. So our websites are based on tons of data and split test after split test into the nitty gritty things like forms, the placements, the colors, the verbiage, the imagery, lots of things to make a care website convert. And you might look at this and think like, oh, this is a lot. You got a lot going on, but this is a really high converting website. It's ranking number three in Google. Um, so this is kind of what the, what the customer sees. Uh, but essentially, when you launch a Carrot website and get it up and running 20 minutes or less, and a lot of the pages, the core pages are already built out for you. Um, they're linked together. They, it's all the copy and imagery is in there. So you can launch it really fast and then just add your branding, your photo, your bio as you go. So it it's it's totally different than having to basically create a website from scratch. A lot of that is already done for you. You just go and optimize it, tweak it, personalize it. So um, this is what a carrot lead generation hub looks like. Well, it very fast too, and a lot of different resources. And you said you can build one of these in about 20 minutes or so? You can get a launch in, in less than 20 minutes. You go in, uh, pick your theme, pick what pick what you're trying to do, whether that's just build credibility overall or attract motivated sellers, or maybe you're a land investor and you want land deals. We have different templates for different use cases, um, or maybe you're looking for buyer leads. So you choose your template, choose your design, and then get it launched. And then, yeah, so you can, you can have it up and running in 20 minutes legitimately, and then tweak it as you go, add your bio, your branding, et cetera. Perfect. Yeah. So folks, if you want to check out their specific website, have the QR code up on top. So you can just go ahead and scan that with your phone and uh, check that out. Now, one of the things to get rankings and using different AI tools, how does, do you, I know that you have a little presentation you want to show and uh, make sure we walk through that process. So go ahead and take it away with that. 
Yeah, man, absolutely. Um, so I think there's, there's really about the three different things you need to think about. If you're thinking about, uh, if you've signed up for carrot and you want to know what to do, there's really three things to consider as far as like the strategy behind trying to generate leads online. Um, one thing I'd mentioned before I kind of dive into it is even if you're not doing any online marketing, oops, I'm on the wrong, uh, here we go. Yeah, even if you're not doing any online marketing, all the offline marketing you're doing leads back to your website. If you're calling or you're texting or you're doing direct mail, no matter what type of business you're in, if you're knocking on doors or even just having conversation word of mouth, people, it's 2024, people are going to Google, they're searching for you. They want to know if you're legitimate. So they're going to be typing in your company name, your name, all that offline marketing you're doing is creating online demand and driving people back to what should be a lead generation hub that's built for conversion instead of what most people treat it as, which is just a, a glorified business card, like somewhere for people to get your contact info. It should do educating. Um, it should build trust and credibility with prospects, your website, your lead generation hub should. And, uh, yeah, that's in a nutshell. So even if you're not doing online marketing, you're like, ah, SEO is not for me right now. You still need a high converting website. So um, a lot of people make that mistake, man. And I, and I hate to see people lose deals because they don't think they need to be online or they don't think the website really matters that much. But just think about one <laughs> one lost deal might cost you. Um, yeah. So as far as strategy, I'll, I'll kind of boil it, boil it down for just for brevity and for time's sake into three kind of main points here. Um, the first one is brand search. So like I just mentioned, um, a lot of people overlook this, they get their website up and they think, okay, that's enough. Um, but you need to make sure that you're showing up. If, if I'm Brady by his houses in in Phoenix, Arizona, I need to make sure that pe when people go to Google and they search Brady buys houses, my website, boom, is at the top. I don't want them finding my Facebook profile, my personal Facebook profile or some news Thing that the local news station did on me a while back or who knows what I want to make sure that they find my business my website and they can go down the the research rabbit hole if you will um, and I want that person to turn into a lead instead of just getting lost online so showing up for brand search is uh, super important and a couple of the terms I kind of have on this slide here um, like you know Brady buys .com, company reviews like people are going to Google and searching this stuff for your business uh, all the time. Um, you just might not be aware of it. Um, and then your how it works page um, and your blog. So people don't often think about this when they're getting a website launched, but like uh, your customers, your prospects want to go and look at a how it works page, see your different services, your products, and they want to read blog, blog articles on what you do. They want tips on your, um, you know, they want tips and helpful content on your website. And so, yeah. Brand search is one of the most important things you need to think about before doing any other SEO or any other evergreen marketing. Any any questions on that or anything pop out to you, man? Um, so creating those blogs, you know how that's how do you think about that? Like, what how do you go about figuring out what to do and what what first to create? Yeah, that's a good question. I will answer it. I'm gonna. It's on, it's a couple slides later, but I'll show you kind of how we do that, how we make it real easy, but that's a great question. Um, I promise I'll answer it. All right. Um, so, okay. You, you know, brand search is important. You want to be showing up in Google when people search for your brand. The second thing uh, to think about is conversion and credibility. Conversion, Carrot does a lot of this for you out of the box. You don't have to think much about it. Our websites really do convert out of the box. Um, credibility is the thing though. And I guess, well, let me throw one more thing as far as, uh, as far as conversion, um, whether you're going with carrot or you're building a website from scratch and you want to put the time and energy into that, um, you need to focus on conversion first aesthetic second. And that's where a lot of people go wrong. They build websites for themselves and they think, how do I make this look really good? Something that I like, but you don't necessarily know what is going to convert a visitor into a lead, what's going to convert prospects. So um, you need to build with conversion in mind. It needs to load really fast. Your forms need to have low resistance, have the right wordage, the right colors, and you need to have your website set up in the right structure so that people can go down that research rabbit hole again. So conversion, then credibility. I mean, in short, this means uh, personalize it, get photos of yourself on there, a real bio of yourself, uh, video testimonials of you closing deals with customers or testimonials say, hey, 
what did you like about us? How was the process of working with us? What was that like? Tell me about it. So uh, conversion and credibility are, are a huge deal. Um, that these are a few screenshots of what this looks like on a care website. And that's what it doesn't look like. If your website looks like something like this, no person, uh, personality, no credibility, long, uh, forms, you're mm -hmm. losing deals. I guarantee. Um, here's an example. Can you ask about blogs? Uh, here's a blog example of like selling your house to an investor versus with a a Roseburg real estate agent. This is something that's built for showing up in Google. So this is ranking for search terms about uh, selling to an investor versus an agent, and it's helping educate the prospects. So it's building trust and credibility with them. Okay. Um, so takeaway there, your website really should be doing half the negotiation for you. It should be educating people. So that by the time you get on the phone with them, whether you're investor, agent, HVAC, whatever you're doing, they should have, your website should have already built that trust. Like, oh yeah, Brady, I saw you on the website. Yeah, I saw your video. Super pumped to work with you. I got to read your blog on this versus, uh, oh, hey, how's it going? And, and you've interrupted their day, you know? It, it's warming them up, you know? Right, Brady. So it's more like telling that story of who you are and what your brand is, even if it's your personal brand, but mm -hmm. putting a, a personality behind what your service is. And I think that's what you're, that's kind yeah. of the heart that you're saying. Exactly. Yeah. We got this text from one of our members, Bo, a while back. I'll share his website if you want, but um, he texts us as he said, if you go into the back end of my website, you'll see the newest lead. And the seller said she did all her research and she binged all his videos and loved the main page video. So he has an about me video that shows like who he is, his company. She cried. This is a real story. He got the video of her afterwards. She cried in her living room and said she thought I was the only one who could help after watching the video. That's crazy. I mean, when she picks up the phone to call him, she's ready to go. Like you've locked the deal in and he hadn't even been on the phone with her yet. So that's the power of having a lead generation hub and doing credibility in the right way. It's, it's just crazy. Can't make yeah. that stuff up. Well, it's also the power of video as well. Yeah, <laughs> it is. It really is. And we've done studies. I mean, conversion, uh, conversion for websites with video on them goes through the roof uh, for, yeah people that are doing video on their website. And it's something Google wants to see too. You have a blog post on a certain topic and a video on that topic as well. You pair those together, with the YouTube video and the blog post, your chances of ranking are going up tremendously. Fantastic. Yeah. So you asked about blogs. Um, what do I write about? Um, a lot of the leads people are getting are coming from uh, location pages. So what's ranking in Google, if you go like, you know, Google sell my house fast, uh, Phoenix, Arizona, or maybe what's a, what's a suburb around Arizona? No, well, like um, Desert Ridge. Desert Ridge. Um, so there are people going to Google right now and searching how to sell my house fast or sell my house for cash, Desert Ridge, Arizona. And what they're going to find is not necessarily somebody's homepage of their website, but a location page. Uh, built exactly for Desert Ridge. And so uh, one of the things that we've done is we've taken that strategy of having location pages. You'll find the same thing with companies like Zillow. If you're buying a house, like, you know, buying a house in Desert Ridge, Zillow already has a page populated with Desert Ridge and it's search results, homes in Desert Ridge. So Zillow and tons of other billion dollar companies have used this strategy. We've taken that same strategy that's proven, that works in the eyes of Google and implemented it into the Carrot software. Um, so one of the things we've done is created basically uh, like an auto location builder where you can go into Carrot and launch location pages and it will pre-populate with the images and the content specific for that location. So we've taken a lot of the headache and work on the location pages. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the other thing I'll talk about in just a second is uh, is your your niches, kind of what niches do you serve and what blogs can come along with that. But um, yeah, I'll skip through that. But yeah, this is kind of what a location page looks like. So you have their homepage, sell your house fast, and then a location page linked to the homepage, uh, sell your Dallas, Georgia house fast. That's just an example. But all these other specific location pages for terms that sellers are searching, link back to your homepage. Um, and then, yeah, let me just, let me do this, man. Do you care if I show you real quick? Just yeah. do a quick little demo. Oh, that's perfect. Okay. Let me see here. Okay. So if I go into here, I'm going to go into, uh, back into this care website. And if I go into pages, 
This is a test site that I have. I'm going to go to add new. It's going to ask me, do I want to create a standard page or do I want a niche topic page with supporting posts? I can hit select, I can hit next. And this is where I answer your question about blogs. So I won't share the location pages. That's a little bit more straightforward, but um, when, when we're teaching, okay, you need to create blog content. You need content on your website. That's people's questions. Like, what do I need to post about? Well, let's say that you are, you're an investor and you want to, you're really good at picking up properties from tired landlords. Maybe you were a landlord, you have experience in property management and you're like, you know, I know how to talk to these people. These are the leads that I want to attract. So you can go into our, our niche topic page builder and select this topic, how to sell a rental property with ten tenants in, you know, whatever city I'm in. Um, and then you're going to put the state. So I'm going to do, in my case, I'm in Oregon and it's going to create a page, how to sell a rental property with tenants in Oregon. And so here's the magic, man. We've taken, we've taken the mental work for you out of having to figure out exactly what blogs to write about. No, I'm go. I'm blazing through this. If you're doing, if you're getting real deep on SEO, you need to learn how to do keyword research. If you want to rank in a competitive market and you want to be number one for some of these more popular terms, yeah, you need to learn keyword research. You want to dive, you know, dive into SEO. Uh, but for a lot of people, trying to decide what to write about and what blogs to do and how to link them together, this is this is our solution to that. So, anyways, it created that page for me in the back end, and now I've got these blog posts right here. Uh, how landlords can save money making repairs in Roseburg, Oregon. What to do if your tenants ask to sublease in Roseburg, Oregon. These are like lower volume searches. There's not as many people searching these um, these terms, these keywords, uh, but they're really high motivation. They're super specific. And so when somebody finds this blog post, like, oh my gosh, this is these are the answers to the exact questions that I had. Like this is the perfect resource in the eyes of, in this case, uh, a tired landlord. So I can hit publish, review, and then boom, here's my page. And if I scroll down, like it's all already populated. And here it is linking out to all of the related, related articles. So when we're talking about AI and automation, imagine how long this would have taken you to come up with what to write about, decide on those topics, probably going to hire a blog writer or a copywriter, and then write those, research and write those. Even if you're like going to chat GPT, you still got to do the prompts and all that, come up with the right headings, optimize them for SEO, and then link them together. So internal linking is something that Google wants to see. They want to see those posts linked to each other and back to a page. So at the click of a button, I just launched that page and then all of these supporting blog posts. Wow. That's, that's a powerful AI tool yeah. to be able to put all that together. And so when, all that copy that's written there doesn't need to be like updated or changed or what does that look like? Yeah. So it's a good question. You want, um, you want your content to be unique in the eyes of Google. And so you do need to go in and update it to make it your own, kind of personalize it a little bit. And ideally you want it, uh, as close to a hundred percent human, um, uh, basically human generated content as possible. And so what you can do, I've created this, I can go in, I can click on this block and I've got this cute little uh, carrot bud right here. It says carrot AI rewrite. I can hit rewrite text now. And we've baked in AI into our platform so that if you have our content tools add on, depending on your subscription, you can go in, hit that and then boom, it's going to rewrite the content. So it's rewrote it here, rewrote it here, and I can. What I like about this versus just ChatGPT is I can see the original and the new version back to back like that, and I can take that. I can plug it into a tool that text AI generated content, and I can see what the level is. We're typically getting like high 80s, sometimes high 90s uh, human generated content with this AI rewrite tool that we've trained uh, to be real estate specific, industry specific. So yeah. Got it. Um, so with that AI tools, I know that there's um, others out there like finding up uh, keywords and like you mentioned that before, like how do you find a keyword? Yeah. So does someone have to find or purchase another platform to figure out what keywords to go after? No, no. So we have a uh, carrot keyword explorer. So basically, if I go back, I'm going to ditch this post. And if I go into here in SEO, Oh, I haven't added my domain yet. Let's see if it, sorry, I'm on a test site. So all the features aren't fully available. 
Um, let me see. Yeah, sorry, I should have prepped for that. But um, yeah, we have a keyword explorer. So you can basically go in and, you know, type in your area and it'll make, you know, give you recommendations on what keywords to go after. It'll show you the difficulty level, how difficult that is to uh, rank for. It'll show you the search volume for it. And another cool thing you can do is you can um, add in, you can add a competitor's URL. So let's say a competitor in my market, you know, John buys houses. I can plug in his URL and it'll show me what keywords he's ranking for. And then I can actually, we have a keyword ranking tracker. So you can just click on that keyword, add it to your carrot account and start tracking that. So you can try and compete for the same keywords he's ranking for. That's powerful. And so you're starting to roll this out for multiple service-based businesses. So, so, yeah. any, so when is that rollout going to happen or is it ready now? So as of right now, I mean, you could, so we have a general contractor, um, a few weeks ago, he switched to carrot. He was on a HubSpot website before. I didn't even know HubSpot offered websites. It's on a HubSpot website. I had it for years. It wasn't doing anything. It looked good, but it wasn't getting him any leads. He decided to switch to carrot, reach out to us. He said, is this doable? He said, yeah, it is doable. You're going to need to rewrite a lot of the content though. And he said, we're making plans to do that. So in short, you can expect it later this summer. Um, at the at the earliest or excuse me at the latest um so mid this year but anyways he said it's doable you got to rewrite the content so he launched a carousel on friday worked on it over the weekend spent about two half days two full days working on it launched it sunday night i can't this is not typical so full context not typical he got his first lead four days later it's crazy that lead turned into a fifteen thousand dollar deal a fifteen thousand dollar construction project mm -hmm. He got another lead a couple weeks later that turned into a hundred and fifty thousand dollar remodel project. It's crazy. Wow. A couple wow. weeks after launching the website, so he was on a, he did have his um his domain had authority because his web his website had been live for a while, but he had never gotten any leads off of it. It wasn't doing anything. Switched it over over to Carrot, and then boom, right. motivated leads. It's crazy. It it just just goes to show the the importance of having a strong foundation, right? Yeah. Um, cause you can have, you might think it looks great. Like you talked about earlier, but does it actually convert? Does it actually, and that's the main thing Are what kind of ROI am I actually getting from this? And then you looking yeah. at carrot as an alternative for service-based businesses, this is one thing that you can look at. Yeah, it's crazy. And one thing that comes up too, man, is, um, there's always this argument of like, should I send people to a landing page? So maybe if you're, you're just doing like Google PPC or Facebook ads, like, well, I can just get a landing page builder. I can go to ClickFunnels or something like that. Um, but what people don't realize, especially in the real estate industry, even HVAC, like service-based businesses where they're making large financial decisions and spending tens of thousands of dollars at a time, is that people want to do their research and go down that rabbit hole. I'm gonna, I need a ticker for every time I say research rabbit hole. But people want to go to your website and they need to be educated, okay? Right. And so landing pages in general, yeah, they're okay for getting leads. Um, but for our industries, man, they need to go to a website. And so we've done the data, we've done the testing. You send people to a carrot homepage versus a landing page. The carrot homepage is going to consistently convert into deals, um, at a, at a higher ratio than a, just a stripped down clean landing page. Got it. No, perfect. And so when you're talking to, um, strategy, going back to that as well with yeah. how, how to generate leads, then when you're talking with co-founders and um, marketing folks and even other executives and they say, all right, I got it. Um, I understand making sure we do the conversion. What, and then make sure you have a great website. Um, where are, where's the disconnect? Like, do they, where's the disconnect with really following up with those leads that they really get? So they got the lead from the website. What do mm -hmm. they do next? Is uh, What does that process actually look like for them? Yeah. So it, it kind of depends on your business model and what type of, um, yeah, what kind of business model you run and how you like to follow up with leads. But the way we see it done well is, you know, I'll kind of just mention a few things. One, we got a lead notification manager. So it's in one of the add-ons you can have, you can choose to have your carrot website, just shoot you a text as soon as you get a lead. Okay. So if you're the type of person who likes to just hop on the phone, um, I'd recommend, you know, you get that text message from carrot. Hey, new carrot lead. You follow up with them as soon as possible, especially if it's from paid traffic, like 
PPC and they clicked on your ad and they went to your carrot site, those people, you got to be really quick with the follow up because they're likely going and clicking on other websites as well. Just submitting their info, submitting their info, seeing who they can get a call from, you know, as they're looking for a solution. So lead notifications, follow up with them. Um, but the people who do it really well are who also uh, set up drip campaigns. You're probably, probably familiar with, but um, setting up follow up drip campaigns, you know, for the coming days, weeks, months, sometimes even up to a year, um, especially if they're not able to get a hold of someone over the phone. So setting up email drip campaigns, which super easy to do with Carrot. We integrate directly with a few of the top CRMs. Um, and if it isn't something we have a direct integration for, you can integrate using Zapier as well. Zapier, Zapier. You got it. You know, tomato, tomato. Yeah. <laughs> with that word, right? Yeah. Perfect. Uh, and do you have any other slides that you want to show or share with anybody else? Are you, did you go through everything that you want to share? Uh, let me see. I think so. Um, let me see. We talked about location pages. We talked about authority blogs. Um, I showed you that. Um, here's an interesting thing, man. We're, if we're talking about AI and in content creation, um, so I already showed everyone a, a couple ways AI and care makes content creation easier. And some people might be asking, like, does Google like AI content? Am I going to get penalized for that? Google did a re uh, update recently, the Google Core algorithm update probably about three weeks ago or so. And it was part of that update was aimed at attacking spam content, about lowering spammy AI content in the rankings. Um, but it wasn't necessarily just content where AI was used to help generate it. So this, this screenshot right here is from Google and it's their stance on AI generated content. What they said in, you know, I'll summarize this last sentence here is our focus on the quality of content rather than how the content is produced is a useful guide that has helped us deliver reliable quality, high quality results to users for years. So they're not as concerned with, did you use AI or did you not? They're concerned with, is it unique? Is it helpful to the user? Does it showcase what they call EEAT, expertise, experience, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness? So as long as you're creating helpful content that answers people's questions that, I mean, you know, man, that's content marketing 101, like answer the questions to people's problems that they have. If you're not being spammy about it and you're, you're solving people's problems with content, Google's going to reward you for that, regardless of if you used AI to help generate the content or not. Right. So you yeah. have to go back and put your expertise, put your years of experience and those true stories that you have into the content and just being authentic because it's so much easier <laughs> when you're authentic and yeah. not trying. And a lot of people try to fake it so they make it, which is fine, but it's so much easier just to be authentic and talking to people. It is, man. You have to be authentic. And I think people that are trying to take too much of a shortcut um, are just, it's not going to work. People, yeah, it's, it just doesn't work. So speaking of shortcuts, a, a couple quick, since we're talking about AI, a couple do's and don'ts I thought I might share. Um, specifically for content creation, do use it to help you generate ideas. Do you use specific prompts when creating content? Give it the context it needs, feed it examples, tell it who you're trying to write the content for. So, you know, I am a, I'm a real estate agent investor looking to serve people who want to sell their house quickly for cash. You know, that's a piece of context it would need. Not just say, hey, write me a blog post on X. So give it as much context as possible. Um, use it to assist in writing, save a bunch of time, make sure it's detected as at least 90, 90, it says 98, let's say at least 90% human generated content and, uh, still lead with what you said, Kendall, man, is lead with your brand voice, that personality and connection. Okay. Don't use it to just mass create articles or pages for you. Don't let it water down your voice and your personality. And most importantly, don't sleep on it. Like people that are leveraging AI correctly are the ones who are winning. Um, don't sleep on it and think it's a fad or that's going away. Right. These AI tools aren't going away. And especially when you want to learn how to generate leads with these AI tools, because it's nice to play around with them and to be able to see the things that are going with large language models. Yeah. But how can you actually produce something of a result that helps your business grow? And then really focusing on those specific areas and the three areas that I talk to people about is what is your your process, what process that you have in your business. 
Then you look at your people. You know, who do you have on your team or in your network that is helping you grow? And then you look at your tools, which is your business process automation tools, your AI tools, your even um, invoice and processing tools, all of those things. You look at that and see if you're utilizing those to the highest and fullest that they can. Because mm -hmm. I think that's what a lot of people start doing their shortcuts, thinking of that new shiny like shiny object syndrome that, oh, this is going to help me generate all the millions that I need to continue to grow and sustain. And that's not the right way to do it. But you're showing as you have a specific content strategy and then using a great platform that is proven to work mm -hmm. uh, for service based businesses, then, you know, you're on your way to winning and especially winning in this economy. Is that right, Brady? Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, I think that's spot on. You know, the one the one takeaway I would leave people with, the question to ask yourself is, how many deals can you afford to lose to an underperforming website? If you've ignored your website, if you've ignored conversion, if you thought, oh, that doesn't matter, how many leads are you willing, how many deals are you willing to lose from people Googling you or looking for a solution and you're not showing up or your website's not done right, and you're losing deals. What's that worth to you? That's right. something to think about. Yeah. And if folks, if you have any other questions, um, go ahead and you can go to kendallmatthews.com forward slash ask or scan the QR code up the top. Then also I have available, we're going to have a lot more templates and checklists available for you. So if you want to generate leads with AI tools, go ahead and scan the QR code or go to kindlematthews.com. And then we'll provide you, and my team and I will provide you the checklist and templates that are help any co-founder, any executive, any team of that is that is focused on service-based businesses or B2B businesses that they want to grow. Mm -hmm. We have the resources for you. And so Brady, thank you for guiding us through this whole process and with this real estate edition. I want to make sure we come back on and do some deep dives into the platform. Yeah, absolutely, man. Thanks for having me. It's always fun to talk about, man. Happy I can help. Wonderful. So remember to go ahead and follow me and subscribe to this channel and make sure that you're doing some great things and continue to ramp up. We'll talk to you soon.